These are the uh, larvae for the day, which are going across to the farm. So we're just measuring them in these kitchen scales. That's 1.3 kilos. Okay, one and a half. Not bad, and then we flip it over, and of course the ones that we haven't got will come through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go, we're coming up to two now. Which is good. And Barrack's just uh, doing the record keeping, which is of course an important part. This is just the paper version and then it gets uploaded onto the computer, but you can see it's there's a reason it's paper at this stage. Um, so we'll probably try and get a bigger basin and then what you can do is you standardize so you just know well that's if we fill that to the top it's two kilos. Um, it becomes quite easy then to, to weigh them so you're not having to um, do that incredibly precisely. <laughs> that's good. Put them in the sack and then they'll get transported across. Um, and the question always comes from people is like, what are you doing in these BSF? And I always forget because not, not all of you will have watched everything, of course. Um, but the reason we're using maggots is because we are fish farmers and those maggots have about 50 to 60 to 40 percent protein. Um, and when you're feeding any animal, fish, you need a high protein. Um, diet and then that gives they put on weight quite quickly and then you can harvest them so we're looking for high protein um, feed for the fish but that's expensive so if you're using commercial pellets just far too expensive to, to do um, so what we're looking for is to ways to reduce that cost quite considerably and then we use these maggots to feed the fish the fish love them by the way because they're moving around a bit more e exciting maybe they taste different I don't know I've never <laughs> never eaten one um, but they really like them and so they grow quite quickly on the pellets and, but uh, for us as farmers the good thing is the cost it's much much cheaper um, to do. The question is you know what are we feeding these maggots um, and this is the sort of stuff so this is waste right it's, I mean it doesn't look very nice um, it doesn't smell great um, and yesterday um, I was at a chicken farm um, and the chickens are laying eggs they're obviously uh, you know excreting all their waste there's a bit of their food, the chickens are quite messy eaters, so when they're scratching, the food's falling down. There's some maize and chicken pellets in here, so we'll use some of this for the maggots. And then this is um, underneath this bag, you can see like this is the food from the household, um, most but mostly actually from um, from the market. So it's fruit waste, and um, we have all these barrels here. Um, so that waste that is just will eventually turn into compost, but it's just dumped somewhere. Especially at the chicken farm, there's a huge area just with waste, and it's just just sat there doing nothing. Um, and so we're using that to turn that into food for for our fish. So that's why we're using um, the, the waste. And so we've just come, we were just brain, brainstorming, just improved this process slightly. So we were weighing them at the farms, but we decided we're gonna start weighing them from here. Um, <clears throat> and we're tearing the tearing the scales, so we knew that's about three hundred. So four point six six yeah. minus three hundred is about so it's four point three kilos there. Um, and in that sack we have seven, so this becomes eleven point three. Eleven point three kilos going today, and we still haven't finished. Um, and uh, we've got all the bays, we've got all the fish in the, sorry, all the fish, not at the fish farm, all the maggots in here as well working. So um, it's great, you know, the, the, we did a very popular video which was asking about seven kilos. That was a challenge we set to the staff. I went to a production site where they were easily doing that. Um, and within a month or two, we've shot through that. Um, like I say, we're taking a fixed amount because so we'll probably take maybe 12, 13 kilos today um, and then we'll save some more for tomorrow. So we're not trying to harvest the maximum in, a, in one day. It's, you know, you're sort of staggering it. So what your fish need. Um, just, I mean, it's just a fantastic amount of 
the feed to be able to get into those ponds and those fish. Um, I'm sure, you know, some of them are quite close to getting to harvest size for us because we sell small fish. Um, but being able to feed them that high protein diet gets them quickly there. The cost is very minimal because we're using that chicken dung, chicken manure. Or we've, the only cost we've got, because um, it's waste, is we've got to transport it here on the back of a tuk-tuk. But we can do quite a lot of that, you know, the staff costs of maintaining all the polytunnels and the BSF and all that type of stuff. But that cost is much cheaper than buying lots of pellets. Um, and we can also supply a lot of, the whole point of this is to supply, the reason we've got a polytunnel is because we want to supply five day old, so hatchlings with small little maggots to farmers who have waste where they are and then they can feed their fish. So very exciting to see. Um, and we've got new plans for this part which is currently used for some banana and stuff, sugar cane, which is very nice, but we will have to harvest it um, fairly soon uh, and start an expansion. Um, and then we're also going to be using our frass, which I haven't talked to too much about it. Normally I do. After currently our frass is stored under here and you can see this is sort of, see how black it is? That's because it's, that's fresh, but it's left over. That's where it becomes fresh. All the nutrition's gone out. Um, and then we've got sacks of it under here. Um, and uh, it's under here to stop because that you get leech, nutrient leaching from the sun. Um, so we are trying to keep that protected, keep the rain off it as much as we can. But obviously this is not ideal. So we're gonna build a, uh, we'll have a structure to put store of this. But the potential of this is great. We've had a couple of farmers um, on a, quite a low level who've taken some frass and used it for their for their bananas, matoki, which is often eaten here. Um, and they've seen quite good results um, using that. Um, someone else that we know has used it for his avocados. So he's seen some good progress there as well. So we, um, I think we've been sort of sitting on the frass for a long time just because our focus is on we've been getting the maggots up and running and that's taken us a while to get everything right. Hopefully you can learn from our mistakes. Uh, but frass is probably the next, one of the next things that we're going to start pushing um, and just sort of see how we can go with that. So yeah, so that's some good progress. It's good to see the maggots being collected um, and the fish enjoying eating them, as they would say here. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to sign off now, but thank you very much for watching. Uh, we appreciate your support. Do like and subscribe because that does help the channel to grow. Um, we've got, uh, we're having sort of a, a bit of a rise in viewers, um, but we noticed a lot of you aren't subscribed, so if you could do that, that would really help us to, to grow the channel. Thanks very much, and we'll see you in the next video. Just a quick correction on the numbers. Uh, we just tallied it up again, and we're actually sending 14.4 kilos to the farm. So we've doubled what we were trying to do, the seven kilos. So this video should be called probably 14.4 kilos, is it possible?